Hi, this is Farrell. Welcome to my YouTube channel and next video of the Robot Todd comic, page 23. And uh, today I'm doing the next part of the sequence of them in the sort of cave city, like abandoned empty city graveyard area. And the last, uh, last scene was them seeing these like slugworm things coming out of this pit and they're reacting to it and here I'm penciling it I used one of these just old automatic pencils with uh like probably like HB lead something like that and uh, a little eraser dispenser that I use a lot um it's a Tombow I think is the name of that uh, brand something I got off Dick Blake I don't know um, yeah, here it looks like I'm getting frustrated or something with the penciling, but it's probably just because it was, uh, um, like a, uh, like a late night session or something, but, um, that is the, uh, first pass of the pencils before I had it, uh, I mean, they're pretty, fairly tight, not super, super tight, but inkable, and, um, I think I worked, yeah, it looks like I worked on the pencils a little more before I started lettering here. And, uh, yeah, here I'm going over the lettering with a, with an old, uh, Faber-Castell pit pen, size S. And that's what I've been doing all the letterings with. I try not to use my brand new one <laughs> for the letterings because the point's like a little, little wider. And I just hold my pen, pencil, try to hold it, uh, at a 90 degree angle, like straight up and down when I do that kind of thing, just because I feel like I have a little more control over it. Um, but yeah, this, uh, the lettering was pretty much malleable from the, uh, the thumbnail stage. I didn't show the thumbnails and stuff this time, but, um, I, I mostly did that off camera, but I, from my, I usually, uh, put, I have everything in a like a text document on my phone and uh little thumbnails that I've done in my sketchbook and I, I try to figure out like the text and everything beforehand and um go over the uh go over it as I'm penciling. And a lot of times I you can see my cat kept interrupting me, so I just had to put the drawing aside for a minute and give him some pets. But um I usually go over everything as I'm penciling and we'll change stuff like in the third panel, I added the part about them getting sick, uh, or, or dying. I added a little more explanation. I wanted it to feel a little like there was like a little more at stake other than them just being grossed out by these slugworm things that were coming out of this pit. Like I wanted them to have like some, some fear relayed. So they were like running, but, uh, Robot Todd's sort of like, well, what's going on? You know, like pointing at him. So I wanted the other character to sort of explain why, uh, uh, explain why they were running from them. Like they're like, it was, uh, like there was some kind of familiarity with their, the danger involved other than just them being like superstitious or whatever. So, uh, yeah, here I'm, I'm, uh, I'm inking them with the uh, kind of the nicer, the newer pen that I have, uh, the Faber-Castell pit pen, size S. And then I switched to size XS, and I actually dropped this pen at some point, and it fell right on the tip, so the tip bent. But it was still, it's like new enough to where the uh, the tip was still usable, even though it was a little flimsy. I tried to bend it back, straighten it out a little bit, but not not too hard because I didn't want it to like break off, but, um, I was still able to get a, a decent line out of it, even though it was all bent up from falling on the floor, right exactly on the tip, of course. Um, so yeah, here I'm, I'm doing little, uh, adding a little lettering too on the little slug, slug things and they're sniffing. So I'm adding little sniffs. The idea is that, uh, these, these little gremlin creatures had come out of the pit earlier and were like freaking out, sept. and Robot Todd came and flashed them all with this bright light and it made them run back into the shadows and they came back out wearing these 
eye bandages, things that sort of protected them from the bright light, but they couldn't see anymore. So I have the, they have these big ears, so I guess they're really good at hearing, but they have these little slugworm creatures that are sniffing them, you know, can smell the smell them and they're using them to sort of like go after go after them and for some kind of nefarious purpose I don't really say but uh yeah you'll have to this is almost getting to the end of the issue so we're gonna have to probably find out in the next issue what happens to them so the next page is going to be a, a, a scene shift one of the few scene shifts I have in this comic um back to Fern Fells for a page so she's gonna, we're gonna try to re, you know, re, not reunite them because they haven't been together yet, but bring them together for the first time, the whole team together. Uh, but yeah, like I said, we're rounding the corner, or winding down, or getting to the end of this issue. This is page 23, like I said earlier, and 26 will be the actual last page of story. And the issue is gonna be 32 pages in total. So I'm gonna have a couple extra things, like letters page and things in it. Um, so yeah, here I'm going over the whole page with the, um, the blue that I've been using pretty much for this whole scene since they've been in the cave. I've been using this, uh, intense blue, like liquid watercolor. So it comes in this little vial and, uh, I'll put it, that and all my other supplies in the description. If you're curious as to what exactly it is, I don't remember the name of it offhand. Um, but you can look in the description and, um, yeah, see what that actually is. But what I did is I just diluted it with a little bit of water. And at this point, I put it in a jar with some water, like a few drops in a jar with a little bit of water. I don't know the exact ratio. Um, and at first I was diluting it even more, but this this time I, I pretty much used it straight from that bottle. Not the bottle, but the, the little jar that I, I diluted it with. And uh, yeah, and then I'm just, I kind of did a pass on it and then let it dry, like I walked away from it for a while. And then I went back in with a little black ink and black watercolor and uh, added, it's, it's kind of weird with the, the ink because the ink dries a lot lighter than the watercolor does. So if I dilute the ink, like when I first put it on the, when I first put it on wet, it looks like almost black. But um, once it dries, it lightens up a lot. So it's a little deceptive. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that, but sometimes if I don't want, if I don't feel like trying to get like the right black with the with the uh, watercolor, watercolor black, I'll just kind of be lazy and mix in a little of the black ink, and sometimes that creates problems. That sometimes it ends up looking kind of nice, kind of like more of a like a translucent quality or something. Um, but a lot of times if I want something in shadow or whatever, I'll have to add more like blue watercolor or black watercolor or something like that. Give it uh, a little more uh, I don't know, density or something. I'm not uh, great on the terminology, but it just there's so much of this that's kind of like intuitive and it just I sort of just feel out. And also I use this jar of opaque white, this Dr. Martin's opaque white. I mix in with a lot of the... Um, a lot of the paint too. I don't, at, especially at the end, to try to kind of clean up some edges and stuff. And I, you know, go over any little, like if I kind of overlapped into the lettering or any little, just clean up little edges too with it, just using it straight. But a lot of times I'll mix it with like a little blue or something, and that it's that kind of like weird gray quality to it. But there's the finished page. It's. Uh, page 23 and this is my crowdfunder that's still going on i got like another week and a half or so left on it i'll put the link in the description appreciate if you check that out and uh i'll see you in about a week bye